Hi everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Rebuilding Newcastle. Today is a massive match. We've got a big tie that could potentially decide where we finish in the league. I think it's the highest stake game we've had all season. So I'm going to share it with you guys today. Hopefully the best match we'll have on camera from the first season of the series here. So it's a massive, massive important game. Very excited for it. So let's get right into it. Hello everyone, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel if you're new. As mentioned, we have a huge high stakes match today. We're in the run-in towards the end of the season now. Only seven or so games left of the Premier League season, eight for some clubs, seven for us. And today we are facing off away at Anfield to fifth place Liverpool. Now, this is probably the hardest game we're going to have until the season is over. We've been doing really well, exceeding all expectations, currently sitting in third place only two points off the league leaders although they do have a game in hand so if we win this match we could potentially go on to be involved in the shout to potentially win the league at the end of the season it's a bit of a push but we could do it if we can beat Liverpool today however the biggest stake in this game is the fact that even though we're doing so well the gap between us and fifth place is pretty small so we're probably guaranteed already one of them top five spots but if we get the fifth spot, we're going to miss it out in Champions League, which is what we really want. And Liverpool, if it were to beat us, of course, would then be on the same points as us with a game in hand over us. So it's massive, massive important match for us today. We have been playing really well. We've got a few injuries to worry about. So yeah, let's get right into it. Thank you guys for all the support on the channel, on the video so far. If you are enjoying this series, if you could like it, it will share it to as many people as possible and it will really help with continuing this series and how well it's doing because it's still blowing my mind. Every aim I had for this series, I wrote on the list and I've been able to basically tick them all off and we're currently aiming for 5,000 subscribers and we're getting really close to that already. So if you're watching these videos, if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, I would suggest why not do it? It's free, you can change your mind at any point and it would be awesome if you did. But oh, this is going to be massive today. I don't think I'm really prepared for this. Comment down below what you think is going to happen in the match if you think we're going to win. Don't spoil it for anyone in the comments So afterwards when you find out the eventual result, which I'm about to find out with you guys here too. But yeah, I suppose in general, since you last saw us, it has been a couple of months since that video just after the January transfer window, which was, where was that? Who did we play? It was the Brentford one, right? Joe Willick scored, yeah. I think it was the Brentford one. Since then, we beat Aston Villa 2-0 at home, lost 3-0 away to Norwich, which was... Very disappointing because it's not like Norwich are even doing well. They're in 16th. Uh, that's probably their biggest result of the season. I can't believe we lost. But yeah, uh, we did have one of our better teams out as well. Like a better first 11, should I say. And to lose 3-0 was very embarrassing. But we bounced back with three straight wins. Away to Southampton 2-1. Home to West Ham 2-1. And then beat Leicester 3-0. Which in general, I know that Norwich result is in there. But if you took everything from January onwards, we're beating the teams we're expected to beat at this point in terms of where we want to be as this potential top four club. So I think we're doing a good job. Losing away to Man City 3-1 isn't the biggest deal in the world. Although with them sitting in a similar position to us, this can really change our season here because if we lose this and lose this game against Liverpool, we're starting to struggle. But if we were to lose this one but then beat Liverpool, we're suddenly on a high going into a few games that we could potentially win. A fourth place match against Arsenal, a Burnley home match, which we should win, a Wolves away match, a Chelsea home match, Crystal Palace at home. And you'll likely see us around here in the next video, the end of season one, depending on how things are going, because that could potentially be where, I don't know which episode it's going to be, where we can potentially be in a chance with winning the league or getting Champions League position, whatever it is that finalises where we are. That's what I'll show you. But, um... I don't really know what else to talk about before we get into the game. I'm hoping it is a good one. I suppose if we look at who's been playing well, Nianzu is still absolutely killing it for us. Tolisso has been very good since joining. We had to deploy him in the right-back role and the box-to-box -box midfielder role so far, and he's doing exactly what I wanted him to do, to be that versatile player that can play any position, really. And for only a couple million pounds, I think it was a good bit of business on our end. Joe Willock still surprising me with how well he's doing. Valued at £50 million now. He's had a great season for us in midfield. I think he's probably... Probably my favourite player from this season. I think he's done really well for us, way better than I expected. Rafinha's in form, Badashile's in form. Only problem being, if we scroll down to who's injured, Livakovic, who we've pretty much constantly used all season, is out of this game against Liverpool, which means Carl Darlo is likely going to be starting. I don't actually think we're right at the game yet, so we'll have to forward together to get there. But um, facilities-wise, the board had promised they were going to upgrade stuff, and they did. They've upgraded the stadium, which actually, no, that's still in progress, but... If we go to the facilities, I think they've now actually confirmed. There you go. Great training, great youth facilities, excellent academy coaching and excellent youth recruitment. We've even had our first youth intake come through. I believe the director of football is offering them contracts, but the best player we had come through is Richard Crockard. I need to be 
very, very careful how I say his name because that last name could get a bit uncomfortable if I pronounce it wrong. But 16-year-old Northern Irish international with 20 determination, some great starting attributes, left footer, got plenty of potential. Uh, we've signed him onto a contract, although there is plenty of interest in him. So maybe we'll make a bit of money from him. Maybe we'll make it into the first team. I'm not sure. You guys who have been around the channel for more than just this series will know that usually uh, you guys can put your name in the comments and I'll put them on a youth intake player. But as of around the Lazio series and a bit of the Lille series too, we had so many people wanting that that there was too many comments and I, I couldn't really pick because it was going to be picking and choosing favourites and the backlog was so long that the people that commented that didn't get on the first youth intake would likely get on the youth intake in season five or six, which is too long to make you guys wait. So we're not doing that anymore. If you want to put your name on a channel viewer player, there is the join button near the subscribe button where you can learn a bit more about that and the perks of basically supporting the channel. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But just to let you guys know, that is the only way that that is going to happen from now on. But he does look like a very good player, Richard Crockard. Yeah, um, maybe he'll be in the first team in a few years' time, but with the amount of money we'll be spending, I doubt it. We've done a bit of transfer business as well. One thing I forgot to show last episode was the people that we signed deals for that weren't coming in just yet. So we actually spent around six to 12 million pounds on Jamie Bino Gittens, 12 million pounds being what it could potentially rise to. An English wonder kid, pretty much, uh, from Borussia Dortmund. I think it's good business because he's already got some good attributes. He's English, it helps us. And for that much money, I think that'll be fine in the future. We'll either sell him on for a profit or he'll break into our first team. And then Bubakar Kamara is a centre-back that we've got on a free deal because his contract was expiring. Not sure if I'm going to use him or just sell him on, but we've bought him in it anyway. Uh, Paul Dummett will be leaving the club to join Locomotive Moscow and Jamal Lascelles is joining Wren for £6 million, which does help with the transfer budget, which we still have a fair amount of. We've got a big budget as well next season of £83 million. I think that might go up if we can reach the Champions League. So with that being said, I've wasted enough of your guys' time. We're going to forward now to the actual like picking the game and stuff and then we'll just go straight from there so opposition instructions i just got to look behind the camera we will go for that but now it comes to picking the team so as mentioned livakovic is out so uh carl darlow it's got to be selic nianzu badashile grimaldo that's fine Weigel, fabregas no i don't think you're going to be starting this game mate um willock or loftus cheek i think it's got to be willock purely based on form then we've got basuma yes that's fine rafina Edwards and Wilson. There is a debate of whether that should be St. Maximan, um, who has been playing better. Let's have a look. So Edwards is on a 6.93 average match rating. St. Maximan on a 6.88. We'll start with Maximan and bring Edwards on just because he offers us an option on that right wing. Rafina wanted by Man U. That's interesting. That could be a potential bit of profit there if we sold him on West Ham after Grimaldo. Carl Darlo, I'm putting all my faith in him. Everyone, give Carl Darlo your energy. Pray, pray to Danny Drinkwater. If you've been around the channel for a long time, you'll know what I mean by that. Um, Bentacore, do we put him on the bench? Take off Lascelles, maybe? Who have we got on the bench then? Loftus Cheek. Fabregas, we probably don't need, so I will actually put Lascelles on the bench in case we need a centre back. So that's the team we're going to go for. Oh, this is a huge, huge match. Basuma apparently getting the captain's armband because it was usually going to Livakovic, I believe. I have actually sent the two centre backs on leadership courses, which. Um, is fine for Nyanzu and Badashi Lakes. It'll make them more leaders, potential future captains, but it does mean that that's taken up some of their potential ability points. So some of their other attributes might suffer for it, but I think them becoming leaders is, is a good thing because they are going to be the future of our back line, I'm fairly certain. Definitely Nyanzu. Badashi Lakes done nothing to make me want to buy another centre-back. But here we go, guys. We're off in the game, and that is far too quick in terms of the speed we've got it on. I, mean, I think we just missed. <laughs> I think we just missed Mo Salah scoring a header really early on, which is not going to help our nerves at all. Considering we lost last game to Manchester City, it's gone to VAR. It's been disallowed. Thank God. Right, we've got a chance here because that would have been an awful start. Shimikas with a fairly easy ball over to Mo Salah, who finished off. I believe we've actually paid uh, Liverpool him on the previous episodes, maybe episode three. I don't think they used all the players they're using today. I think they've realised now that Newcastle are actually a bit of a threat. So we'll see how we do get on against what should be one of the strongest sides that Liverpool can currently put out. Weigel, playmaker supreme, playing the ball over the top to Wilson, and Wilson should have done a lot better with that. But that's what we want to see from Weigel in that deep line playmaking role. And I'm loving this. Three highlights already in 10 minutes. We haven't had this in previous episodes. So hopefully we've got a good match in our hands. Grimaldo to Selic. Selic to Willock, who we put in this game instead of Loftus-Cheek. Weigel again distributing... Julian Weigel, what a goal. His first goal of the season. I've never seen him play passes or take shots like he's doing in this game. I actually changed his tactical instructions based on what one of you guys said. And we were also trying to uh, train out one of his traits, which was to play simple passes, because I do want him to play these long balls, because he's got amazing passing attributes. 
but he's pulled that out of the bag just for this video because he, he don't usually do anything Julian Weigel look at him celebrating well one nil up against Liverpool this is huge for our season if we can win the Premier League in our first season it's massive Champions League is still the must the thing I really want but if we can win the league or at least come second I think that's great progress and really shows what we could do next season because we did suffer towards the start of the season with the fact that the team hadn't gelled together if we didn't have that I think we would have picked up a few more points and who knows where we'd be so I think next season we're in a very strong position providing the squad doesn't get completely overhauled again Zeki Selic to Julian Weigel Yves Basuma Weigel again he's trying to do he's trying to do what I want him to do I don't mind if the passes mess up I just know he's got the vision and the creativity and the passing attributes he's arguably one of the best in the game at it just to distribute the ball and he's having a great day with it today I mean he's messed up a couple there but you can see we're putting everything through him and it's not usually I've seen it work like this so I'm very happy Callum Wilson has got the goal Maximan doing a good bit of skill a nice pass through and I think that proves that we were right in picking him over Edwards Maximan's done really well there and Callum Wilson surprised me yet again with even more goals and we are currently joint top of the league with Manchester City Maximan with that little spin Wilson with a clever clever finish to put it around the goalie and we're tuning up after 20 minutes but as you just saw joint top of the league right now because Man U haven't played two games that I should preface it by saying that but this is huge. Pavard for Liverpool. That's not a bad signing. Although I assume that means Arnold is not in. Oh, Salah. Going very close. Where is Arnold? Is he playing? He's not playing. Maybe we're a bit lucky in that sense. Sam Robertson not playing. But everything else is what you'd expect. No Sadio Mane. Maybe one of them is injured. Minamino in midfield as well. No Fabinho. Maybe this isn't Liverpool's strongest eleven they could have. But they're still certainly a threat. And Firmino has just proved that there. Because Mo Salah has taken a very nice free kick. Caused a problem for Carl Darlow. Would Lovakovic have done better? I don't know. Maybe he'd react a bit quicker because Darlow just stood there, but Firmino was the first one to the ball. He's tapped it into pretty much an empty net and we need to do a little bit better than that. But with five minutes to go before half time, we would have taken a 2-1. We would have bit someone's hand off. So I think we'll take it. Although XG wise, we are being dominated. I think it was just Julian Weigel deciding to absolutely hammer one into the top corner. Gotta say we're happy with that for a first half. I'm gonna have to take a drink and then we'll get into the second half. Okay, this has been a really intense match, so oh, this has been the best one we've had on video so far. That's good because there's not as much transfers and stuff to talk about, so I enjoy when we actually have a good match on camera. And Salah is dictating the game like Weigel is for our team. He's put a great ball in there, and the header was just over from Joe Gomez. Very close. That has been a weak point for us, to be honest, battling in the air in them kind of matches. But I'm loving this from Weigel, a 7.6 average match rate, and he's done brilliantly. The midfield this season has arguably been the best part of our team because they've always been really solid, particularly the Mazala. Carl Darlow, he does his job. That's probably the best I can say about that because that was a long-range shot that you probably could have caught and he's put it out for a corner. So as long as nothing happens from this corner, it's fine. I'm blaming Carl Darlow. I don't think he needed to put that around the post and force the corner, but I did mention we have struggled defending corners. You've already seen it this game. And Gomez has risen first there. Nothing we can do about the corner itself in terms of stopping it, but we could have prevented it going to a corner. And that has annoyed me that we've lost a 2-0 lead. Don't get me wrong, I would have taken 2-2. It's just the fact that we were 2-0 up. Hopefully Nyanzu is going to give us a first highlight for a long time here though. Playing the ball back to Darlow, Badashile, Grimaldo, Basuma. This is nice football. St. Maximan probably tried to force that a bit too much over the top there and it's not really going to work with the likes of Van Dijk in defence. Not unless you're Julian Weigel, but um, here's Firmino. He's passing it around. I think this is going to be a Liverpool 3-2. I just have a feeling. Salah, Milner, James Milner with his... 10th goal of the season for James Milner. You're having a laugh. 10 goals. How's he scored 10? Uh, anyway, we're 3-2 down. We've absolutely balls this game up. I don't even want to watch the highlight, but we do need to make some substitutions now to potentially just draw the game level. Rafina has done absolutely nothing. Edwards can come on there. Basuma and Willock not having the best of games. So we're going to go for... We're going to go for Ruben and Bentacore, if we switch it, does that do anything? I think I want Ruben in the Messala role. And that's what we're going to go with. I don't know why, I just feel like that should be right. Bentacore hasn't done too much on loan for us, but I still think it's a worthwhile sign in. Manchester City going 1-0 up is the real kick in the teeth there though. Grimaldo, Bentacore, going to be offside surely. You look miles offside. If not, I'm an absolute genius manager. I'm telling you right now. Please give it. Disallowed. No, it was disallowed. Oh, I had to be on the edge of my seat then for a second. Was it far off? It's really not. It's actually not at all. I think that's a bit of a dubious one there. The, the VAR rules have changed. No one told them. Uh, let's go to 
I was about to go very attacking, but it looks like there might be a highlight on the way. And there is, and it's going to be for Liverpool, which is the, the worst part of all of this, because if it's 4-2, it really just kicks us in the teeth morale-wise, but maybe, maybe we'll counter-attack. It's Milner, who's apparently some amazing player in this world of football manager. Pavard to Elliot, it's going to be another Liverpool highlight. But it is going backwards, that's all we can say. Simakas, he's probably the one that we could maybe get the ball off of. Cater with a shot, he's blocked, still falls back to Liverpool. Come on, just win the ball back and give us a highlight for his Elliot getting in around the back far too easy there. Grimaldo with the challenge, is it going to be a red card or a penalty? No, it's not. The highlight's still going on. Maximan to Wilson. Callum Wilson's in. He's just got to square it. Callum Wilson! 3-3. Free, free. I thought that was almost definitely a Liverpool highlight and then out of nothing, out of nothing, Callum Wilson. That is, that's actually made me quite happy because I didn't even think he was going to score the finish. I thought he put this in the wrong place when he went near post. He, he's done Van Dijk and then tucked it away. Oh my word. This game has been a brilliant one. Um, I, I'm getting very excited. I don't usually get this excited on a game in camera, but this is massive for what it could mean for our season. Can we finish it off with a winner? I'm not going to press any buttons because I'm fine with a draw. Oh no. No, there's like 10 seconds left, football manager. Please, not James Milner. Anyone but him. Pavard, Thiago. I don't want to watch. Simicast. Simicassi, oh, mm, Naby Keita, Naby Keita with 30 seconds overtime. Oh, I don't, I don't know what to do now. We've lost to Manchester City, we've lost to Liverpool. This has been a, a dis emotional roller coaster of a game, and we've done terribly defending that. That should easily have been cleared. That went past two of our players to get to Keita who walks around like he knew he was going to score and it wasn't a 94th minute winner to put his team in the top four and relegate an opposition out of the top four. I don't know. It, it was a decent performance, to be fair, away at Anfield. That was a proper Anfield game, wasn't it? And that leaves us... OK, so we're still in fourth, but we're one point away from Arsenal. I think, realistically, that's our title challenge done because Manchester United, if they win both their games in hand, which you expect them to do, that puts them on to 71, 74 points, which means we are currently... Uh, eight points behind them with six games to go. Not really happening, but I think I will bring it back for whenever it decides where we are, whether that's the last game or the second to last game of the season. And then we'll be on to the second season of the series. I, I think we've done... We, this is a good season overall. I can't let these two results throw me off, but we were doing so well. At one point, you know, in that game, we were, we were joint top of the league at one point, And now we're sitting here saying the title challenge is over. If we can win every other game... Maybe, but Wilson having a good game, Weigel having a good game. Realistically, Carl Darlow, I want to put the blame on him, but it probably wasn't his fault. I don't know. I don't know about that. That game, it's just, I'd, it just if we weren't 2 0 up, I would have been fine with the performance. But every, everything else, yeah. That, that's it. I don't know what to say anymore because that has just really just taken all the energy I have out of me. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. It was a really good match, actually. So hopefully you did enjoy. I hope you all have a great day. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you all for all the support. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.